Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of One Mike Mac, the podcast that brings you stories of artists and people on their journey, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in the business. My name is Marco Solis, and I want to thank you guys all for joining me for this episode. If you haven't already, please make sure you drop down, subscribe, click the bell because you never know when I'm dropping another episode, and share the episode and like it if you do at the end. Now, today I am so excited because I have some guests here who I know you're going to like, and I want to share them with you because they're all incredible. Today we are talking with some people from the David Z Foundation who are transforming lives through music. It's a nonprofit organization, and I want to introduce you to the people who are associated with it. First off, we have Pauly Z, who is the founder of the David Z Foundation. He's also a singer and artist in his own right, which we'll talk about later. We have Dan Roeder, who is the education specialist and chief academic officer, and Joanne Sloneem, who has worked for about 15 years in focusing on child education and help in creating the music mentoring program for the organization. So I want to welcome them. Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. Yeah, great to be here. Listen, I have questions. <laughs> we have answers. <laughs> the first question, I guess, goes to David. Uh, David, I'm sorry, uh, Pauly. What is this organization? Tell us a little bit about it and how it got started. Well, it's about David, actually. <laughs> Funny you say, it. and I get that all the time um, because David and I. Well, David, for those that don't know. Uh, David Z was my brother, so it was Paulie Z, David Z, and then we have a youngest, the, the little one, Brian. But uh, David and I, uh, because of our age and our interest and in, and in, in, uh, stuff, we were um, super super close because we both played in the in bands together, and we were just two years apart. So he was a bass player and singer in a band in the band that we were in called ZO2, which you I know you know. We can yeah. talk about that later. <laughs> Uh, yeah, rock that power trio out of Brooklyn, New York. That you know was pretty successful actually in the in the in the uh, rock world. Um, especially, we had a TV show called Z Rock for a couple of seasons. We toured with Kiss and Poison and played with ACDC and Alice Cooper and all these you know all these really cool things. But that was our night thing. And by day though, we did children's music professionally, and we actually released kids' music songs, um, wrote songs, released CDs. We had uh, cr created curriculum. And the TV show was about being a rock band at night and a kid's band by day. So that was like a very unique life that we led. Um, and in actually tomorrow uh, will be the fifth, uh, five year anniversary of his passing. He was killed in a car crash while he was on tour with another band called Adrenaline Mob out in Florida. And um, uh, we had started a nonprofit uh, before that back in 2011, which under a different name. And then I kind of put it aside for a while and I moved out to LA, like kind of had to, I had my own little restart that I had to press in my life. And I knew one day I would uh, pick that back up again. So I kept the 501c3 status, which is the official nonprofit status for those that don't know. And I just kept paying the dues. I said, yeah, maybe when I'm like in my 60s or whatever, you know, like, right. you know, I'll, I'll go back into doing philanthropic work, right, later. But when he died, I just, something, a light went off in my head and I said, okay, I think I know what I need to do. I have to resurrect this thing, change the name, and then dedicate my life to this, which is what I, I do anyway, but not in that sort of, in that kind of uh, focused uh, uh, path. You know, I do it, but I didn't, I wasn't doing it in this way. And um, in his memory. So the David Z Foundation is basically a nonprofit, an official nonprofit, that raises money for music education for kids um, in memory of my brother, David Z. So I keep the legacy going. I keep our, you know, our uh, passion and journey, which we were on together our whole lives. Uh, he was 38 when he died. You know, I knew him all his life because I'm older. <laughs> so I knew him from, day, from day one to the last day. And now I keep, I keep that dream going, you know, and then, and then, I'm constantly reminded of him. I'm constantly connected to him. And people that didn't know who he was now are learning about him, you know? I love that. So I guess the question is, why, why do this? And why do this for the community? Why teach? Why use this medium to connect I, people? I mean, that's, I guess, that's like asking, you know, Michael Jordan, why do you play basketball? <laughs> mm -hmm. it's yeah. Honestly, I mean, it's, it's, it's for, and I guess, People that maybe aren't creative types, 
or athletes or, you know, who may not understand this, but when you have a passion or when you have a purpose and you, and you find that and you figure it out, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, the answer would be ask God, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to say why. I can tell you how I feel. I, it's, it brings joy. It makes me, f- I love doing it, but why? It's because it's who I am. It's who he was. It's in my blood. It's, you do it because that's what you're meant to do. I don't know how else to describe it. It's my purpose. Does that right. make sense? Well, yeah. I, I can add a, a, bit, a, a bit of a why from the sidelines. Yeah, please do. Um, and that's, I think it really fills a need. Um, in, in uh, communities and, and schools, uh, music programs are disappearing. And it's unfortunately one of the things that's just on the chopping block um, along with the rest of the arts. Um, and I know that the intention is good that we're increasing math and science and, and ELA and, and everything like that that's academic. Um, but I think it, it's um, what we're doing kind of marries the two worlds. Um, we love writing academic songs. We love writing social emotional songs and then um, songs that help um, focus on youth mental health and um, help kids process trauma. Um, and I think just, um, Polly, working with you for the last year on this, um, I, I can see a lot of that processing on, you know, with you and, and it, through the students that we're working with and as we help them um, write songs about what they've been through and what they, um, either if they're feeling loss or difficult feelings or um, some other form of trauma, uh, music is is really healing and it connects us all. So that's some of the why that has been I love that. Uh, apparent. I think you know what's funny is that like Dan, I love the way Dan always it can balance me out because I heard the question as like a personal, like why do you do it? And I went from that internal of like the passion of what, what drives what drives me internally to do what I do. And then I love that you're able to like hear it from a different angle and then like, and then why why do we do it? like as the foundation. And that's the great balance the three of us have as the operations teams because, uh, you know, well, Joanne, she's the stoic one. She, 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 <laughs> she, she, she doesn't have to say a word and she just somehow keeps us like balanced. Keeps right? you balanced. I like that. Yeah, she's our like elder, like, you know, like, um, like you she's know. Like, like the spiritual dress. elder that sort yeah, of guides yeah, everybody she's, through. Yeah, she's our Yoda. I like Instantly that. believable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's funny because it's it's interesting how we heard that question totally different. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. it, and, and I think for me, it's hard to separate the personal because of why the, 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 it's different when I was when I started years ago because it was it was strictly for that for the education purpose and for kids and stuff. But this is so personal that like I, you know, I, I can't disconnect from that. And I love that. I think, Dan, you hit the nail right on the head. It's not only that you're teaching it to help the kids, but you also are receiving therapy from the art, too. And I love that. And I tell people right out of the gate, I said, I'm just telling you right now, this is as much for me as it is for you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I like that. This is my therapy. This is this keeps me away from this is the way. And but I and and the thing is, it's we, we use that as an example for these kids too to show how you can take a very, very dramatic or painful emotion, which inevitably everyone's going to feel, right? You, I mean, how many people don't ever feel something like that? Very, right. very few, if anybody, right? right? At some point in your life. And what do you do? How do you manage it, right? How do you manage it? What do you do with it once you have it? Right, it's, exactly. You, you, it's not your choice to have this stuff happen to you, right? That's No one chooses pain and suffering and anger. But once you have it, you have the choice of what to do with it. Do I put it here? Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I let it consume me? And now all of a sudden I'm ruining my life. And that is the thing I think we're trying to show people, especially through the music mentor program. Um, the academic stuff, I think it's just because, yeah, we're all kind of nerds when it comes to academics, but we're all rockers too. And it's like, there's something interesting about connecting those two worlds. You know what I mean? Right. It's a really cool, uh, a cool thing. Uh, that you get. Mm-hmm. Joanne, how does that, uh, work for you what's tell us a little bit about the mentoring program well um i look at i kind of look at how this works for me or how um this affects me both through paul the way paulie described it and the way daniel described it um for me it was a personal connection i knew who david was through watching him on tv which is what brought me to the foundation because i wanted to make a bigger impact on the children across our world. And um, when we first, when Paulie and I first started talking, um, where I work at the United Way, we have a big program on youth mental health. And I said, you know, 
what can we do to help kids with youth mental health with music? I know how music affects me and helps me get through good times, bad times, hard times. Um, so Paulie and I worked together to kind of build this, um, you know, we built a plan as we were flying at piloting this uh, music yeah. mentor program with uh, students that are located here where I am in central Pennsylvania. We uh, received some funding to be able to do that. And um, it was such a huge joy to me and to see it, you know, spread out. It's, it's just been amazing um, to be able to see happen. And, and uh, I really can't wait to see the bigger impact that we make as we continue to move forward with all the programming that we do. I love that. I think music is just such a, um, a, a great place to um, be vulnerable and it's a great common ground that you can have. Um, and that's something that I've noticed, especially with this music mentor program as it's been developing, is that you can only move forward at the speed of trust and um, having that, that shared experience of um, something musical and something very emotionally uh, and sometimes emotionally raw um there's some magical things that come out of that and so that's just um been been uh something that i've really enjoyed seeing give us give us a little bit of an example of, of what's come out of it i mean you know in terms of where the kids go or what what it does for the kids like experience wise well do you yeah. want to tell them about maybe um no about the grace 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 yeah yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a well, you know what? Tell tell them about that one, and then I'll, I'll tell I'll tell a little bit about like the medley because the medley music program is is a different, it's a totally like different vibe and goal from the mentor. So, mm -hmm. yeah, why don't you start with that one? Yeah. So um, one of our students that received a, a scholarship for the program this last year um, for the mentor program, um, her she suffered a loss when she was very very young. Her father passed away, and um, she just um, her whole family told her. You know, it, that happened so long ago, you didn't really know him, um, you know, you, you should be able to move on. And um, she just never was able to. And um, so I, I had um, worked with her previously um, in another job and, and it was one of those, like, saw, saw the family in the grocery store and they're like, what are you up to? And I told them what I'm doing and the mom pulled me aside and said, this would be perfect for her. And so that's kind of how um, we, we were able to get, set her up with um, a scholarship. And um, that experience was absolutely magical um, and nothing I had, I had ever expected. I kind of knew her backstory, but I didn't know um, the depth of uh, what she'd been going through as far as trying to process it, but not being able to. Um, and so uh, we, we wrote a song with her and Polly uh, just in the, I think it was the first or second session, um, shared his own story about David and uh, there was that, that um, mutual feeling of, of loss and grief that um, the song came, uh, the song was called I Know You're in Heaven. Um, and uh, just w seeing that process and seeing the, the way that she was able to process um, after so long and then um, seeing the mom too in just this very visceral moment say, you know, like, I get it now. <laughs> like, I understand mm. why it was so hard for you. And um, the the big thing for me that was like, um, just an emotional um, wow, was uh, she wanted to actually um, shoot part of the music video at the graveside. Um, and I said, that's gonna be challenging. You know, that's uh, just, just so you're aware. So I just had a conversation with her and, and with the parent and um, we did it, we ended up doing it. Um, and then I found out afterwards that she hadn't been to his graveside since he passed away, since the funeral. Um, oh, wow. So about, about 14 years. Um, and wow. so, you know, just being there and seeing that um, finally, a, not like Polly said, it's not it's not closure, it's not moving on. It's but it's management of of those feelings. And um, so, yeah, Polly. And I keep I keep hearing what you said. I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, yeah. but what you said earlier is the music is opening up a trust mm -hmm. and the trust that you have between yourselves you know or with these kids it opens up a whole new gateway to something else to you know to managing the problems that they have or the trauma that they've experienced mm -hmm. you know yeah well, trust is think about when people listen to their favorite that's why we love music because music is so universal so right I mean, don't get me wrong i love sports i love movies I love all forms of art. I went to art school. I love going to the Louvre and looking at, you know, Renaissance paint. I mean, I love all of that stuff. 
you know, so I'm, a, I'm an art kid, right? But nothing, I don't care what anybody said, nothing connects people like music does. It's just, You're right. it, it's nothing. And it's scientifically proven. It's the way, I mean, I don't get into the science of it. Oh, but don't it, get me started on no, that. Don't, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't, don't do, don't do it. Have, do you have three or four hours? Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> just... no, but, but the, we know, we know scientifically what it does. And we understand, and we, but we all know when you listen to, you know, listen, I listened to Adele and I thought she was great as a vocalist, right? I thought, oh my God, the production, the songwriting, her voice, blah, 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 blah. And then right around that same time, I got divorced back in New York, you know, with my ex. And I heard Adele and it was totally different. Mm, I was crying yeah. like a baby. Right. Never mind. I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was a whole different experience. Right. You know, hearing a song, like singing the song, like The Show Must Go On, like I'm in a Queen mm -hmm. tribute, right? Singing that song now after losing my brother is a different experience. When you say inside my heart is breaking, my makeup may be flaking, but my smile still stays on. Those were just words yeah. to me six years ago. Do you understand what I mean? It was yeah. like, it was all about the technique and the vocal. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to hit that high note. It's a very different experience now. So music, the whole thing about music is that there is that universal trust, right? Because now it's like we're connecting like that girl, Grace, is a perfect example. She was putting feelings that were very, probably very difficult to talk about. But but when you put it into a lyric and a melody, it's different. And now it's we're different. connecting. It, yeah, we're connecting almost like in this safe zone that you yeah. can't even, right. you know, describe, but which is music. You know, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the other program, like the. Can I, can I just, yeah, sorry, yeah, can ahead. I interject? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. No, I just want to say I think the the greatest thing about the um the mentor program is that we're validating their feelings these kids are coming in you know the girl wrote that she feels useless you know that that's you know to me it broke my heart to hear that she's writing a song about feeling useless so at the beginning of it it's about what they're feeling and they're writing about and we're validating it and we're helping them reduce the stigma around what they're feeling and mental health issues and by the end of it they know that this song is, can help someone else so it empowers them to yes. own own it and and really you know really say yeah this is how I'm feeling um, if you're feeling the same way you know it's okay yeah and, right and to me that's what was most important because the stigma that's around mental health in our at least in our country you know it's it's huge and and if there's any way we can reduce that and I think this this program you know helps do that and helps kids say oh it's okay there's other kids out there feeling this and it's okay to feel this way so to me that was a big big push for you know why we needed to do that program and you know and and, and my big thing always was also the production value and again you know and i know that may or may not have anything to do with the therapeutic aspect but i believe it does because i think when a child sees adults working their butts off in, for days in a studio making the, you know, a professional track and editing for hours and doing this and do it for them to make their song and video professional. I think that says a lot. I think that shows a lot of respect and says you are worth, you know, those, those songs, it's like days I'm in the studio producing those songs as if I, if, if you know, the, and, you know, as if we would produce the next Maroon 5 record. Right. You know, for a 10 year old girl. For a 10 year old. Wow. Right. And so that that's the other, for me, what always bothered me being an educator and doing children's music, especially with young kids too, mm. is a lot of mm. the stuff out there is, you know, dare I say crap. It's just crap. You know what I mean? People put out songs and they're like, oh, and this is the, the multiplication song and the rubble and the production is terrible. The song is terrible. It's like, I feel like there's a separation between kids and adults. And in my world, it never was. So the, I think the other thing is when you see a child like that write about uh, their losing their father or feeling useless or feeling bullied or whatever, and then they see this music video and a song that's like, oh my God, that's that's like, that's for me, I did that. And you guys put in that time for me. To me, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine the kind of, you know, a feeling that that would be if someone did that for my brother and I when we were kids. Right. You know? I love that. And that goes back to what you just said, Joanne. It, it empowers them. Yeah, it really empowers them. Yeah, it's pro pro level validation, right? Right, and that's why we spend <laughs> a lot of time and money on these productions. We treat them, you know, uh, uh, we treat them like real songs, real videos, like rock stars. You know what I'm saying? Because, because they are. They are right. to us. They are, and we want them to feel that. You know, mm -hmm. we're not going to go in and be like, oh yeah, we did this in Garage Band. You know, for thirty minutes. Here's your song. 
you know? <laughs> I love so, it. And, and that being said, the, med, the other program is an academic program. So we go in with classes, groups of kids, and we write a song, but usually either something academic or uh, something that's more like a social or global uh, um, mm -hmm. topic. And we do the same thing, write a song, make the video, record it, all that. But the cool thing about that is that we use the music as a vehicle to learn the topic. So whereas the mental program is more about your mental health and your emotions, oh, this wow. is like schoolhouse rock, but on straight up neuroscience. Oh yeah, like times ten because we're writing songs about math and science and uh, recycling and saving the earth and sustainability. Song, yeah. yeah, bullying and uh, 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 refugees. I mean, some really deep topics with some of these kids, you know, photosynthesis and whatever. So they're writing these rock songs. Imagine, you know, or pop songs. But they're also learning. Learning about it too. Yeah, and I'll give you a perfect example. The very first video I, I did, which is called The Scientific Method back in 2011 at, at a school in Brooklyn. And I'll never forget, because I did that school. I still, we just did one about equality right now, an anti-racism song, right? And I, so I went there every year, every year. And I think about six or seven years, uh, maybe five or six years later, I was there for another one. Mm -hmm. And one of the kids was there who was in Scientific Method. And the, the principal was like, oh, do you remember? I don't remember his name now, but he was in the video or whatever. He was from another country, barely spoke English at the time, right, whatever. And he told me, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. And he was like, oh, Mr. Pellett, I still remember the Scientific me Method. I oh, know wow. Him. Years later, he wow. goes, I never forgot the words. And I was like, oh my, oh my God, that's, and right. this is the point. This, this is, is exactly what you want to yeah. do. Yeah, You're shaping these young minds. Stuff. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's all it's all the mnemonics of melody, right? Why right. why do marketing people do commercials and they're like, give me a break or you know, buy Menin? Because neurologically speaking, you remember with melody. Mm -hmm. So if you put these concepts to melody, and now the kids are writing the songs, they're choreographing, they're singing it. It's, 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 it's very clear that they're going to have a better retention level. And not only that, let's face it, a lot more fun. <laughs> How many kids do not have fun right. in school? Exactly. Right, going to school. I love school. I, I'm a big fan of school. <laughs> yeah, there's a quote that just always sticks in my head. It is neurobiologically impossible to learn something you don't care about. And it's so true. You have to care first. You have to get alert and then you have to get oriented to it. And you have to care about it if you're going to actually remember it and retain it. And that's what these standardized tests are measuring retention. But if we don't equip them for retention, it's, it, they're not going to get it. <laughs> so. That's so right. true. And that's a big part of why we're so passionate about what we do, because we understand it's not, we're not here to like give kids guitars and, and, and say, oh, we want you to learn, you know, Zeppelin and Beatles and giving away free instruments above because there are plenty of incredible organizations that do that already right why are we going to reinvent the wheel they do that what we do is something that i don't want to say nobody's doing but i don't think anyone out there is doing at our level you know what i mean at the sort of with the passion that we have of really combining these worlds at a high level um, of production and and reaching internationally we just did we just finished a video with a school in Cape Town, South Africa. We just did a video with a class in a hundred kids in like. I love Luke, that. That's, that's what, that was actually going to be my next question. Has the virtual world helped you? Like in terms of collaboration or, you know, has it expanded your reach a lot? Have you used that? I'll let you, one of you guys take Oh that. yeah, take yeah, that. yeah. Well, so first of all, I want to give just a shout out to one of our partners, um, Global Lighthouse Studios, and um, the the, co the founder of that, Donna Guerin, um, just has this huge international network of schools that she's already working with on sustainability. And it was just kind of a, a partnership made in heaven because she's got this passion for, for actually 80s rock. And, uh, um, and uh, she just loves music, um, but she says she's not musical, which, you know, we can talk about that later, but that's, that's not a thing. <laughs> but um, she, she uh, just um, really got, kind of got us out there. She helped line up these, um, uh, this uh, song in Cape Town in Buenos Aires, and we're now doing um, a, a short camp next week in the Philippines. Um, we just uh, did um, uh, our first TikTok video with a school in Dubai. Um, so, we're, you know, we're uh, definitely the whole um, connectivity in um, Web3 in um, just in, in general, um, uh, being able to connect on different platforms 
virtually. Um, and and I'll say it as a teacher who taught in the pandemic on Zoom for two years, the Zoom um, just opened the world and it <laughs> Absolutely. made it so possible to be um, having meetings, uh, like whether it's on Zoom or WhatsApp or, or Telegram or whatever, um, at any time throughout the day, um, talking about music and how we can use music to learn. Yeah, it was interesting because before the pandemic, all those videos that I was doing back in the day were all in person, right? So even uh, when I went, I would go to Hong Kong every year and do this program. And you know, you gotta fly out there and I had a week to do it. And you had all the kids in the room and then uh, you know, it, it was always that way, right? And that's the only way you can do it. So if you didn't physically go out there, you can do it. And the pandemic forced us to reinvent everybody, obviously. But it, I think for us, it was actually a, a benefit yeah. because we, I think this is for what we do, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think it actually is a better, more efficient way to do it, which I don't know that we would have even thought of if we didn't Probably have Probably not. But, so it yeah. kind of, in a way, was a blessing in disguise because we had to design these things so that we could do them virtually. You know, and every I mean, I, I wasn't in Pennsylvania. All those videos with the kids, for, you know, that uh, Joanne set up, it all had to be virtual. Um, for a couple of them, I actually flew in after, you know, recently after the pandemic to do it. But before that, we had them taking their own footage. You know, Joanne was there filming. And, you know, we had to work with what we had to work with in, in South Africa. We weren't there, but we made it work. And so mm -hmm. it really, really opened up the door for us to be able to do this for more kids anywhere around the world. And I think for kids in a safe way too, because you know, sometimes people, when they're in a class, they don't open up the same way. Mm -hmm. I love it. So what do you want us to know about the foundation? Just in general, what would you like someone to know about the foundation? If they wanted to know, what do you do? You know, like as a final word, I want people to go to the website, learn about it. And why would we send our kids there? Well, why don't we each, I, I, Joanne, yeah. you want to start? Why don't yeah. we each give oh. our, if you I can. feel like that's something we each have might, might have a different take on. Well, I, I uh, just kind of hoping that they got inspired by me talking about mental health. As you, that's a huge, huge thing for me. So um, come and support youth mental health, come and support these students and, and uh, help us expand our reach so we can help more kids. Our, our systems are overtaxed um, right now with co you know COVID really overtaxed our, our systems. And this is a way that kids can get um, help to, to uh, help them address their issues that they're, that they're dealing with. So um, I just would hope people would go check it out, uh, learn more about us, uh, about our board of directors, about David, everything, and um, say, I wanna, I wanna support this, I wanna help a child um live a better life that's how i look at the music mentor program is, is improving their life yeah and i'll kind of riff on that on the academic side um i'm i my background is in teaching special education and so the word all has always been really important to me and the word inclusion and um so i think to me uh, my my core value that really aligns with what we're doing as a foundation is that music is for everyone music is for all and um that means all access, um, whether uh, it, you, uh, there are people with disabilities, whether it's um, low income situation, whether um, uh, they're dealing with loss or um, uh, like stress or trauma or, or whatever, wherever they're coming from, everybody can connect through music and everybody should have access to that. And um, coming from the education world and, and seeing firsthand all of the uh, music programs starting to disappear and, and be defunded and, and just, um, Kind of slip away. Um, it's uh, that's. I, I would want people to know that this is a way that we can make music in every classroom because um, because of the accessibility of the program. Because we go to science classrooms, math classrooms, um, special ed classrooms, social emotional learning classrooms, intervention classrooms. We'll be in every classroom because music is for everyone. And then I'll, I'll riff on that, and I'm going to continue the train. <laughs> yeah. Because I love, the reason I wanted each person to answer is because we each have a different, we come in from a different angle and different background. If you notice, Joanne, it's very connected to the mental health aspect, right, of what we do, because that's something that she's more con personally connected to. Um, Dan has got the academic stuff. 
right? And we all have all of these things, but you can see where he comes in with more of that experience and passion. So, and I have a very sort of different, even though I've been a teacher my whole life and I'm, and I'm a free, I love academics and, I'm, 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 and I love the, the uh, you know, youth mental health and everything we do, but as an artist, you know, coming in from being a touring artist, being on television, you know, having fans, having people have your signature tattoo, you know, that can mess with your brain. Yeah. You know, I can really make you know. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, you can get a big ego, and and, and I can only, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how it is. And what happens is you can lose your grip on reality sometimes. And yeah. I've had those moments, you know, especially at the height of, the, of my career. And when you're on stage, and and you see people, what always bothered me is when people are like, oh my god, I wish I could sing like you. And I'm like, what do you mean you can sing? Or like, oh, I wish I was there. I wish. I feel like we look up to these athletes and movie stars and rock stars. You know, I feel like there's like them, right? If you're on right. stage or you're on TV, and again, I experienced it by being on TV. It was even even more than ever being on stage. You can't even compare. When you're on t television, it's nothing like being on the stage. It's a whole nother world of right. like, oh my god. And I'm like, I'm just like you. What are you talking about? Like, oh, what's the difference? But there is. I think people see like, oh, we're here. And those people, because they're in Hollywood, are here, you know. And you're watching the Kardashians, and you're watching, you know, Kanye, and you're watching this guy, and you're watching that girl, and whatever. And it's like they're like superstars, right? Like gods. And at the end of the day, they're not. They're just normal people that are just doing, you know, achieving great stuff. They're doing cool stuff. Yeah. But they're normal people. So for me, I think why I always push the creative and the production side of it, which I know sometimes I like a broken record, is because I very, very much believe to my core that these kids are rock stars like that. Everybody, honestly, everyone. I meet the janitor at the school, you're a rock star. Until you prove me wrong. Now, if you turn out to be, you know, disrespectful, <laughs> you know, not cool, whatever, right. then fine, I lose my respect, and now you're just, get out of my way, right? <laughs> but I, I always, I feel like everyone deserves to be and are, in their own world, a rock star, and have that respect and that feeling of confident empowerment. Because it is, you know, when you're on stage, you're, you know, even you, this is your show. This is your show. And you're on the mic and you're like, I have my guests or whatever. There's an empowerment. You can't right, tell sure. me yeah. mm -hmm. There's an empowerment that you're kind of in control of your little world right now. When I'm on stage, that's my world. But when I'm off stage, that's someone <laughs> I have right. no control over the rest of the world. Right. So, and I feel like a lot of these kids don't feel like they have any control mm -hmm. of yeah. any aspect of yeah. their life. See what I'm right. saying? So when they're now in a program where it's like they're doing, they're writing the song, they're recording the song, they're edit the filming and the, and here's the video you understand it yeah yeah it, in right. my opinion it Buenos Aires the the student emerged as the lead singer in the program like it, it, you, you weren't planning it like that oh, was amazing it, yeah. to see and I didn't tell you the mother sent me a whole long message in Spanish about my you know which she had to translate my wife and and you know but she was like you have no idea what you did for my son and he He's always I so love shy that. And I love that. Thing. And then all of a sudden, he was the lead singer in this video. Yeah. And he had 100 kids behind him singing. Wow. And empowerment. It's all about that empowerment. So I think when you take all these different things to answer your question, what I, what we want people to know about the Dave Z Foundation is that, is that we have a model that we call Dave, right? After, you know, and that's our acronym. And it's a formula. It's like dream. We want these kids to start, have a dream. Don't be afraid to say, I want to be this, I want to be that. Apply, the A is for apply, which is do the work. Practice your instrument, you know, mm. write lyrics. you got to put in the time. My brother put in the time to be the great talent he was. But that guy never stopped practicing. Mm. I never saw him without his face. I mean, that's the application aspect of it, right? Then you visualize, and that's where you start seeing yourself. I can, I, wait, I can do this. You know, that's when you, you know, you, you do the things you need to do to visualize. And then the last one, the E, is the empowerment, which is where you actually go do it. And I think we feel like if we can get kids to understand this formula, you I'm done. Yeah. I'm so done <laughs> at this <laughs> point. I'm Are roasted. <laughs> Listen to me. Come on, you, man. You listen, can't argue you guys, with that logic. First of all, this is why I wanted to do the show with you guys, because I had a feeling this was going to happen. This is by far one of the most valuable shows that I've done, because your superpower, Paulie, is exactly what you're doing. You've taken all everything that you've learned in your life and you're putting it into the kids, into the youth, into the future in such a way that you're shaping these minds. And it's brilliant. Along with everybody else who's here on this panel, 
education, mental health. This is the future. This is it. This is it. You guys have created a formula and that's what I want everyone to know. How can we help you? How can we help you? What do we do to help? Well, you can go- I'm about to lose my mind. (laughs) (laughs) How do we help? Yeah. Uh, we, you can go to davidzfoundation.org and that's our website. You can check out all the stuff we do, but obviously for us, the biggest is always the same problem from the dawn of time, money, capital, because all this takes money to do, um, you know, and then to have an actual nonprofit, a 501c3, you have to keep the lights on. There's, you know, there's paperwork, there's uh, taxes, there's, you know, lawyer fees, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that has to get done in order for us to stay a legit organization to do this. And then you have the production and then you have, you know, so for us, it's just a matter of trying to raise as much capital as we can that we, so that we can do what we're gonna do. And the reason we do it, by the way, I I wanna say this also, is that I was told most of my life, why don't you just do this as a for-profit? You can, you know, and do these programs, you can sell them, you can be rich, right? And at, at, one, and at one point, I was even toying with that. Dan and I actually were trying to like do this as a forefront. We're like, oh my God, we could, you know, uh, we, we'd be super successful. But it's not the same. There's something about, I can't explain it really. Maybe Dan, you could, but I, there's no, it's not the same. The thing about having a nonprofit, as stressful as it is, I'm not going to lie, it's not easy to run a nonprofit. But what's great about it is that it really is about the work at that point. That's no other. That's, the, that's the only way I would say it too. I, I was just gonna say it's it's because the focus is on the work, not the profit. And the right. impact. You know. and the and, yeah, impact. impact. And the yes. Impact. Yeah. Right. Because when you when you're doing something for a profit, it's it's for profit, right? So you're thinking about how do we how do we make a profit, right? We cut margin here. We do this. We do it. Your mentality is different. When it's a nonprofit, you as long as you cover your expenses, right? And again, keep the lights on. Everyone's you know the every everything that needs to get covered is covered then you're good. There's no like, oh, well, we need, we need more earnings this season or whatever. No, we don't. The lights are on. We're good. Mm-hmm, right. Now we yeah. can just do the work. Just do the work. And that's the thing. When you're passionate about it, goes back to the first question. Why do we do what we do? Because that's our purpose. Yes. We can't not do it. Yes. I don't know how yeah. to not do what I do. I don't think Dan and Joanne know how to. Even if they tried, they couldn't do what they something else. So yeah. for us, it's great because we get to do the work. We get to do it and we have more opportunities because there's more support when people know, oh, these guys are legit. This is about the world. And, right. they, and, and we have the videos and we have the testimonials and we have the footage to back it up. That's the other thing. I look at, you know, you, I look at others sometimes, the other nonprofits, and I'm like, yeah, but what do you actually do? I right. can't find anything. Yeah. I'm on their website for an hour. I'm like, I don't see a single thing you've done with my dollar that I gave you. What do you actually do? And there's a lot of fancy ver- words, you right. know, and we want to change lives and we want to this. And what have you done? We're like, here, here's, here's hours and hours and hours <laughs> of footage of what we've done, yeah, right. with overload. Yeah. And, that's what, and that's the thing. So it really comes down to, just to answer your question, support, you know, $5 here, $10 there, $100 here. If a company wants to come in and say, we have companies that will sponsor the whole program. They'll just lay down and say, here, just do the program at this school. So that's really our biggest uh, challenge right now as a small organization is that scalability and really right. getting to that next level. When I think the support comes in so many forms too. I mean, it could be financial support, but even just sharing it, you never know who's in your network that's not in ours that needs to hear this message and, and maybe can help and maybe Absolutely. can share it in a different way. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I can, I can uh, I'll, I'll send you some things for the, the show notes. This <laughs> 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 is and, a perfect way to support by having us on the show. Right, right. and I was just about yeah. to say, I'm chiming yeah. in with that. It, you would never know who's in my network of people that can come in and help support you. And, uh, you know, if, if there's anything that I can do personally, you know, let me know. Um, you know, we can talk about that later as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask awesome. you two more selfish questions or maybe three I, I want to know exact you know you, you guys can tell us what you guys personally have coming up you know and you know maybe people want to follow you too dan as an artist polly as an artist i don't know if joanne if you're well, an artist you as well, but... coming up, joanne. What's coming up? <laughs> i'm not an artist <laughs> you're not an artist <laughs> no no i'm an administrator i do administrative stuff so no mm-hmm. definitely not an artist i'm the money finder for okay. grants <laughs> good i love that well, she's a lot more than that. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> we would not, I will officially say this on right. We would not be anywhere we are now if Joanne did not enter yeah. our, our world. We were like 
like a little mom and pop. It was just a germ of an idea. And she came in and really like, and it wasn't just the funding. I mean, that helped a lot to be able to secure that so we can get that music mentor program up and running. But it was even just a lot of the logistical things that she knows from her experience and then helping us, I don't know how to explain it, but like validating our non like, you know, because again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a musician and entertainer right, yeah. and whatever, you know, I, was like, I don't have years of experience in that world. You know, and she's like, well, you got to make sure you have this code and we have to have this insurance. We're like, uh, okay. You know, she's helping to validate like, your vision. Yeah, yeah, of course. yeah. Of course. exactly. Make I it see real. it. Yeah. I see the like, combination here. Real. Yeah. So clarity, like, clarity yeah. of message, too. I think that yeah. really helped. And just clarifying um, one of our first big meetings that we had, it was like a week long meeting. We we made a playbook and we're just like, here's here's our dreams. Let's get them on paper. And then let's um, see how to make it a reality. So we were in that dream phase, you know, yeah, all the way right? to empowerment. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, but I, I do think Polly and Joanne, you, you guys should take an opportunity to yeah, talk well, about the show. Yeah, please. I will. I will. <laughs> but do. You, know, what do, you, do you have something, anything you want to like um, plug? Now's your time. Just like me personally, Dan the yes. artist. Dan, Dan uh, yeah, I guess I I um I don't think I even told you and Joanne yet. Uh, I I'm writing a children's musical. It's being produced um, August thirteenth. Um, what? So yeah. <laughs> Wow! Breaking news. Yeah. This Breaking is a news lot. Breaking news right here on the Marco <laughs> right There we Welcome go. <laughs> oh wow. my goodness! I didn't know that. Well, congrats. That's great. Yes, that's awesome. See, Thanks. and then um, yeah. So Joanne and I, uh, well, all all three of us, but uh, and Joanne uh, and I, for the most part, have been focusing on this uh, big live event that we're doing. It's our first live benefit concert. We've been doing online fundraisers on Facebook and doing really well, raising a lot of money on Facebook, but we wanted to finally do a live benefit concert. And it's coming up on Saturday, uh, July 30th. So it's right around the corner in Peekskill, New York at the Paramount Hudson Valley Theater. And what's special about the show, is it's not only that it's, you know where it is? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to find out though. Just, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'll find it's out. less than an hour from, okay. from the city. And so it's you may see me hour. there. Yeah, all you Sweet. trust me, you're going to want to come. Okay. Well, let me okay. tell you this lineup. So uh -oh. we have the pre show is going to be the School of Rock Kids from Clark, New Jersey, opening the show. And it's going to be ZO2 reunion with, we talked about that before. That you, yeah, yeah. You, you know some ZO2. I do. Yeah. And so I have a, a, a dear friend of mine here in LA who's going to fly in and, and um, play bass in, you know, uh, in honor of my brother. But it's Joey and I and Sean McNabb on bass. And so it's a ZO2, special ZO2 show. And then we have Steven Adler from Guns N' Roses. We have King Zex and then the headliner Stone Temple Pilots. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? A, I mean, if that's yeah. not a show, I wow. don't know what to say. And all the proceeds I'm... go to the David Z Foundation. It's our first benefit concert. It's called Dave Jam. And that's, you know, and that's really what we've been uh, focusing on, as well as the Facebook fundraiser. That, uh, that Dan and I, that Dan has been helping me with that, which had just passed. So now like our next thing is this, it's huge. We're excited about it. We've got tons of press on it. And that we would love people to know about that and maybe come. And if they don't live in New York, that's fine, but you can check out the website, you know, and support that way. I love it. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, you guys, in New York, right? So one I'm in New York. If you want, uh, on a personal note, I also, I'm in a, I told you I'm in a Queen tribute band. I, Queen, I do a Zeppelin show, and I also have a Chris Cornell show. And we're playing in New York at the Cutting Room on Friday, August 12th, if you want to come see the Queen Really? Show. Yeah. I will be there. Oh, I'll, oh, be there. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. So you got a couple of things. We'll keep in touch, up. yeah, for sure on that. Yeah. Well, you guys, I want to thank you so much for spending some time here at One Mic Night. I really appreciate it. And everyone who's listening in the sound of my voice, please make sure you go to the website, show some support, share this podcast. We need everyone to know about the David Z Foundation. You can go to the website, which is davidzfoundation.org, correct? Yeah. Um, follow them on Twitter at David Z Fund. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And, and also, and you know, it'd be great. One thing I forgot to say too, yep. which costs nothing, but it would be a Oh, yeah, topic. I was going to say. I want, is this what you were going to say? I don't know. It was. What were you going to say? <laughs> Amazon? Amazon? No. Okay. Oh. That's a good one. Too. <laughs> you can, no, no, I was going to say one other thing. You can go to Amazon and sign up with Amazon Smile and put David Z Foundation, and Amazon will donate a, quick, uh, a little bit of money for every purchase you make to the foundation. And it doesn't come out of your pocket. 
Amazon will donate it. You just oh, have to wow. choose it. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and I do it and I spend a ton of money on Amazon. Every month we see a check and it's like, oh, you sent, you know, a hundred something dollars to the, the, to the foundation of your choice. What I was going to say is go, if you go to our YouTube page, watch the kids videos, mm. just watch them so we can get those views up because mm -hmm. that's another thing. It costs you nothing. You don't even have to really watch it if you don't want it. while you're cooking. Just put the video on, let it play, because what we want to do is get those views up so that these kids can see, oh my God, again, it goes back to the empowering. We want us, we want those videos difference. to be, yeah, yeah we, so we really push the people to watch the video to support the kids, you know what I mean? There you go. And I'll put the links on my One Mic Night page if that helps to get the views up yeah. as well. So you can go to One Mic Night page or go to the David Z Foundation page on YouTube to find those. I want to thank you guys. <laughs> For Wait, one more <laughs> oh, one, one more guest? guest? Who's I'm that? Like, <laughs> Lucas. And <laughs> good night. Good night. Wow. Good night. Cameo. Cameo. <laughs> get on. Last <laughs> minute special <laughs> guest coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Pauly Z, Dan Roder, Joanne Sloneem. Thank you guys all from the David Z Foundation. Please make sure you check them out. My name is Marco Suiz. Please follow the show at One Mike Night. One Mike Night is spelled O N E M I C N I T E. Share this episode, post it everywhere. Go to their davidzfoundation.org and support if you can. My name is Marco Suiz. You can follow me on all digital platforms at M A R C O S L U I S. And remember, be inspired by others, but most importantly, be inspired by yourself. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I appreciate you. See you next time. Bye.